It's spooky season and my first Halloween cake this year is going to be a trick-or-treat jack-o'-lantern bucket. And I'm finally starting to get more into Halloween as the years go by, so I'm trying to get the spirit. I have a little eyeball necklace on. And uh, yeah, my little mini, my little mini buddy here with me. So we're gonna make him bigger, <laughs> but in cake. So to start off, I used two eight inch dome pans that I used vanilla cake batter that I colored orange. And I used dome pans because it helped save so much time. I didn't have to carve as much. I still carved a little bit, but it was barely any waste. I used a cake leveler to torque the cakes, and I could have used a knife to do this, but I just found that a cake leveler is so much easier to use. And then once that was done, I then added simple syrup to each. So once the cakes were all cut, I then began to stack them, and I used Swiss Meringue buttercream in between each of the layers. And I used an offset spatula to make sure that all the frosting was level. By using an ice cream scoop, I can make sure that all of my cake layers have the same amount of frosting in between, so that way I can have consistency all the way throughout the cake. So once the cake was all stacked, I then began to add the crumb coat. And the crumb coat is just a thin layer of frosting that's used to catch the crumbs so that they don't end up in the final layer of frosting. So it doesn't have to be a very thick layer, just enough to make sure that the crumbs stick. So once I had the cake completely covered with frosting, I then used an acetate sheet that I bent to the curve of the cake and it made it so much easier to smooth. So once our chrome coat is all done, I'm just going to throw it in the freezer for just a couple minutes just to make sure that it's all firm before I add the final coat. While the cake's chilling, it's candy corn time. I know a lot of people don't like candy corn. I like peeps and liquor. I, I like the candy that people don't like. <laughs> I don't know why. So now that our crumb coat is all set, I'm now going to add the final layer of frosting. So once I get that cake completely covered, I'm now going to use an acetate sheet again, and I'm just going to follow the curve of the cake to make sure that I get it as smooth as I can. And it may take a couple of passes, and you can patch in any holes that you have by adding more buttercream, and then slowly smoothing it out until you get it as smooth as you can. So I think a misconception is that fondant covers any mistakes that you have with your cake or the frosting, and it's actually going to make any of those mistakes worse. You're going to see it look super lumpy, and it just won't look right. So at this point, this is crucial. Before we add the fondant, make sure we get it as smooth as we possibly can. So now that our cake is pretty smooth, I'm now going to chill this cake because I want it to be pretty firm before I add the fondant. So I'm using orange fondant for this cake, of course, and I'm going to roll this out to about one eighth of an inch. Now that I have it rolled out to that thickness, I'm now going to transfer it over to the cake by actually using the pin to pick it up and to place it on the cake. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because covering a curved cake is a little bit harder to do than if the cake was just round. So I'm going to take my time with this part, but I also have to move pretty quickly because I don't want the fondant to dry out and then begin to crack. So I'm going to slowly pull the fondant and then use my hand in a downward motion to get the fondant to stick to the cake. Now that we have the cake completely covered, I'm now just going to remove the excess fondant and then use a fondant tool to push the bottom pieces of fondant underneath to make a clean finish at the bottom. So now it's time to make this cake look more realistic and that's by creating the lines. So I'm using a ruler to create the indentions of where the lines will be and then using fondant tools to bring the line all the way down the side of the cake. Now that we have this cake looking a little more realistic, now it's time to add the jack-o'-lantern face. So I used the Cricut to create this template and then I'm going to just mark where the facial features are and then I'm going to go back and cut these features out. So now I'm using a six inch ring to create the indentions of where the hole will be and then using a knife to cut out that fondant because this is where the candy's going to sit. And I'm creating the rim of the bucket with a clay extruder. And this is such a good tool to use, especially if you're going to be working with fondant. So we're almost done with the cake. And the last thing we need to do is add the bucket handle. So it took me a couple of tries to figure out what was the best way to create this handle. So what I ended up doing was cutting out a black strip of fondant with a half inch fondant cutter and then covering this wire with the fondant. And then I used a circle cutter to create end pieces to go into the wire. That way it looks a little more realistic when I add it to the cake.
Now to finish the cake off, I'm adding candy to the top of the bucket and then using a steamer to add gloss to the outside fondant. So that's our cake complete, and I think that's pretty realistic cake. Looks like my little buddy here. Remember to subscribe to the channel and comment below any cakes that you want to see me make next. Meh. Wait, dream. <laughs> Find it. I stuttered. Oh! I wish. I Can my buddy sit right here? <laughs> he didn't stay. All right, stop. Oh, just stop. Robert. All right. And that's it complete. No, that doesn't make sense. Tonight all the monsters gonna dance. We're coming to get ya. Hope this leaves you with a sweet impact. No, that sounds so corny.